Hi, my name is Rich Vellante. I'm the executive chef of Legal Seafoods. And today we're going to make a, a very interesting salad. And it's a, a spring salad, but with a very interesting ingredient that um, some people know about, but a lot don't. Uh, it's been around for a long period of time, but it's quite a mystery. It's, uh, it's, the name of it is quinoa. Once we have this washed off, what we want to do is uh, roast it. And that's something that uh, you want to make it toasty so you have these nutty undertones. And that's what I have here is what I've done. And as you can see, it's a little toasty. And we have some of this quinoa here. And we just put a little color on it. What I did was I put it in the oven, 350, for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then we just take it out. And then we're ready to actually work with this. So now that we have it toasted, I have roughly two cups here. And what I'm doing is I'm putting it into some chicken stock. Now, you can put it into chicken stock, you can put it into water, uh, whatever type of flavoring that you'd like. And so I get the chicken stock and I bring it up to a, to a simmer and I'll add the quinoa into it. So what you want to do is very much like rice with quinoa. Very similar, two to one proportion. Two for liquid, one part quinoa. You bring it up to a simmer, you cover it, let it sit for 15 minutes, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Uh, the next thing that I want to do, and I chose to do some spring vegetables, and I also chose to do some beets. Uh, beets are great for you. Um, they're wonderful energy food. Uh, they're great for the blood. And what I did is I had some colorful beets here. I have some red and some uh, kind of orangey beets here. And what I'm going to do is to cook the beets. Again, this can be done ahead of time. Um, you have the beet greens. Some of you that love beet greens can use this in a salad. Uh, right now, we're not going to use it for, for any salad because it's going to be in the, this uh, quinoa. But you can reserve these if you'd like and use them uh, in a, in a later date. So what I've done is just cut, cut off the, the, the leaf part and I'm going to put this into some foil with a little bit of salt and pepper, a little olive oil, and then I'll add a little bit of flavoring. It's your choice of what type of flavoring, but what I chose to do is a little bit of garlic. I also like to, to, to punch down the garlic, just a quick piece like that because it, it, it exposes the oils. And so put a little bit of garlic in there, you can do two or three, whatever you whatever your fancy is. A little salt and pepper, and I'm putting in a little bit of thyme. It'll be a nice aromatic and it'll flavor some of the, some of the beets. And then you just make a nice little package there. And you put it in the oven, depending on the size of the beets, so you're putting in about 350 for about 30 minutes, 35 minutes, you wanna check it. You wanna be able to pierce it with a knife, like something like a paring knife like this, and it should go through like a potato, it should go all the way through. So we'll just put this into the oven. Um, I also have here some, some spring onions, or spring garlic, some people call it. It looks a little bit like a leek. Comes out in the short season, uh, right around the springtime. Um, gives a great dimension of flavor, uh, and also a little bit of that oniony flavor, a little bit of garlic flavor. What, I, what I'm doing right now is that I'm treating it very much like a leek. I'm taking off the outer uh, skin, or the leaves, and you also, obviously, you have the root here, cutting very close to the root. And like an onion, you want to peel that back. And so you have this nice, clean flesh here. Um, I'm just going to blanch these in some salted water. And what I'll do is I'll half this. As you can see, it's just a, it, it, it reminds me of a leek, but it has a different flavor to it. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll cut these down to size, like so and blanch them in, in some salted water. And what we're looking for is to blanch them to a point where they are, they're soft, they're edible. They're, 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 they have a little bit of crunch to the, to the bite, but they're, um, they're not fibrous and they're not difficult to digest. So that's what we're looking to do. So I'm just gonna go over here and put them in the water and let them cook up. While we're doing that, we also have 
asparagus, which a lot of people are familiar with asparagus. Um, you want to make sure, depending on the season, they can be very tough when, the, when it gets closer to the bottom of the base of the asparagus. Very fibrous, tough outside. So you have to just be careful with that. Um, sometimes you might want to peel them if, they're, if they are in the, growing in a colder weather. Um, I will blanch these as well in salted water. Uh, some people can, will, would like to roast them, some people would like to saute them, but I think blanching them is, is fine. You also want to have, um, when you blanch these, you want to have a, a nice ice bath close by so that um, you can keep that vibrant green hue to them. So when they're ready to be, ready to be chilled down, you just want to plunge them into the uh, ice water. We have some shrimp. And these are 3140 shrimp. And 3140 means the count of the shrimp. There's 31 to 40 of them in a pound. And uh, these shrimp needs, need to be blanched as well. And so what I'll do is I'll put these in. This is a, a pound of shrimp. And I'll put these into some salted water. Uh, this is the end product of what we have. So I've taken it out of the water, uh, my poaching liquid. And I have the shrimp here. Uh, they're beautiful. They're not curled too much. Um, and they're full of flavor and we, we're, we're cooling these, we cool these down and so this is, as you know, this is a cool salad and what, what you can do for aesthetics is you can cut these shrimp in half. Uh, some people like to maybe keep them whole but I enjoy cutting them in half so that's what we'll do here is just cutting these shrimp in half. Um, so this is what you'd have as a final final product here is the shrimp will be cut in half. So now it's time, the last piece to do with the salad, a couple of other things, is I have some almonds here. Um, many of you have uh, toasted almonds before. You can toast them in the oven. Uh, you can also have better control and toast them in a pan. It's your choice. Uh, and then lastly, I have a little bit of vinaigrette to put, bring it all together. Uh, this is actually a half of a, a uh, a cup of lemon juice and we have a little bit of salt and pepper and extra virgin olive oil. Very simple. And So let's go ahead and build this salad. So here we have the, the quinoa. It's nice and fluffy. Um, it's ready to have all the ingredients added into it. And so why don't we get started with that. The first thing I want to do is take this um, asparagus and we want to cut it on the bias or cut it any which way you'd like but I enjoy it on the bias and we just 45 degree angle cutting it making sure that we um, reserve the tips the tips are the most pleasing aesthetically and this is just all the fun you just kind of mix it all together which is fairly easy to do uh, we also have some of this um, uh, spring garlic and I'm just going to rough chop that as well. So I have some small pieces in here. And this will, this will give you in the salad, when you're biting through the salad, all of a sudden you'll get that nice uh, mellow garlic flavor as well as an onion flavor, but it's not a biting onion flavor, so it's, it's quite nice in the salad. It gives a little body to this as well. Now the next part is I want to add some of the vinaigrette and you add that right into the quinoa and the quinoa is very forgiving with, with types of vinaigrettes they um, it, it just absorbs it quite well as you can see it just absorbed it nicely and what I'm doing is I'm just folding that in and as I mentioned before I want to hold off on adding the beets because if I put beets in there right now this red color would just permeate throughout the whole salad so what I want to do is actually begin to build the salad now if you if you wanted to just uh, serve this family style you could add some of the shrimp on top of this and add some of the beets around there and then finish it off with some of the almonds but what I want to do is I want to build this salad individually so I want to show you what to do here um, another important piece is obviously to taste it and what I'm tasting for is I want to see if there's enough oil, there's enough lemon flavor there, uh, it's a nice balance if there's enough salt, there's enough pepper to it. It's, it's, it's beautiful, it's um, very light, 
uh, lemony. Uh, I would add a little bit for my taste, a little bit more pepper. And you can have a myriad of different vegetables, uh, different flavorings to it. Uh, you can have seafood with it. You can have just all vegetables with it. It's really your choice. So as we're building this salad, and add some shrimp around there. And even the nice pink coloring of the shrimp is great. And then we'll add some beets to it. Now to finish off with a, a couple of other things. We have a little bit of basil here. It depends on the season. If you want to put in thyme, uh, if you want to put in sage, uh, you want to put in basil, it's your choice. I'm just going to put a little bit around this salad. And what that'll do is as you're eating the salad, all of a sudden you get this pop of flavor and it's nice to get a little, uh, little different uh, dimension to your salad and that's what this is. Um, and then the next thing is the almonds. I'm going to put these almonds on and what I want to do is just cut the almonds a little bit. I, I think that uh, maybe it's a little too much if it's just the whole almond right there. So you can either get slivered almonds that are toasted, you can, you can have whole almonds, you can cut it down yourself which is what I'm doing here. So what I want to do is just a sprinkle of the almonds. And there you have it. A beautiful quinoa salad. This is great. Uh, it's something that I like to eat before I'm, I'm running or before I'm doing a lot of exercise. Um, there's not a lot of heaviness to it. it uh, there's a lot of bright flavors to it. Um, it makes me feel good to eat all these types of vegetables because they are good and nutritious for you. And the interesting part is the quinoa. Packed with nutrition. Packed with flavor, packed with protein. It's surprising uh, coming from this seed, uh, but it's very, very versatile. It can take on many different flavors and, uh, and it can accompany uh, many different types of fish uh, items as well. So there it is, quinoa salad with uh, spring vegetables.